Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Justin with the Millennial Mixtape, and today I'm bringing you something a little different. We want to find out how Fiona Apple and COVID-19, aka the coronavirus, are linked up. And so we're going to be taking a little dive into that right after the break. Alright, thanks again for tuning in. As I said, I'm Justin with the Millennial Mixtape. Very quickly, if you like the content I'm putting out, and I know this video is a little different, be sure to like the video and subscribe, as well as hit the bell gizmo when you see it to be notified of any new videos I put out in the future. All right. Back to what we were talking about. So this morning, there was an article published on Wired Magazine called The Pandemic Can Taint the Memory of Things We Love. And I know that this is primarily a music channel. We talk about album reviews and reactions to music videos and things like that. But something in the article really struck a nerve with me and made me want to make this video. Before I discuss what's in the article, a couple of things. Number one, I am not a medical professional, nor do I have any kind of background in psychology. I was a history teacher. Okay. Number two, I'm trying my best not to be reductive or dismissive of the information presented in the article, so please check it out. Um, and number three, I'm a stranger on the internet. You don't have to listen to me. But thank you for listening to me. Now, in the article, she talks to a clinical psychologist by the name of Tony Cunningham. Tony Cunningham works at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. Got it. Fourth try. <laughs> So he works at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston as a clinical psychologist, and he provides some really interesting theories on why Fiona Apple and the COVID-19 or coronavirus will be forever linked in our memories. In the article, he mentions two theories, psychological theories. One is the primacy model, and the other is the recency model, and both of them are kind of intrinsically and extrinsically linked to the other. So in this article, he talks about particularly the primacy model. Now I want to talk about that one, primacy effect. So with the primacy effect, it's the idea that the first time you experience something creates a lasting visceral memory for you. So for instance, the first time I heard I Won't Let Go by Rascal Flatts was at my sister's funeral. Because of that, I have a lasting visceral memory of that song. It brings up painful feelings. It's not something that I want to listen to further. That's the primacy effect. The first time you hear it, and the circumstances with which you hear it, change how you view it going forward. The recency effect. The recency effect is basically the opposite. It's the last time you experience something. So the last time you experience something and the circumstances surrounding it change how you view and remember that event, the mythology that you've created around that event. All right, so I want you to think back for me for a second. What is a visceral memory? What is something that you can think back on, you can remember where you were, who you were with, what you felt like, what the weather was like. These visceral memories, these things that live inside of us and we can relive those memories anytime we want to, right? Uh, something like, <laughs> for me, the smell of fresh cut grass brings back the idea of my dad pushing a lawnmower, hitting a rock, and the rock hitting me in the face. That is a visceral memory for me. So now, every time I see someone with a pushing lawnmower, it has altered my behavior to where if I'm anywhere near the push lawnmower, I will move away so that I'm not hit in the face by a rock again. That is a visceral memory. Something else might be a first date, right? So the first date with my wife. I remember that when we were in a movie theater. Of course, I smelled popcorn. I remember the movie we went to see. These are visceral memories for me. Think about visceral memories for you. How many of them are linked to tragedy? Now, my wife's grandmother, for example, she uh, is 85 years old, and she lived through the Great Depression. Now, that is a very vivid, visceral memory for her. She lived through the Great Depression as a young girl, and because of that, it has forever altered her behavior. Now, she will go shopping, and even if it's not something she needs, if it is a food item that is a staple, things like cereal, noodles, and it's on sale, that's the key word, it's on sale, she will stock up on that. She'll buy three or four of them because she knows what it feels like to be hungry. During the Great Depression, Great Depression with her six brothers and sisters, there were times when she did not eat. And so the Great Depression has altered her behavior through tragedy to where she no longer, she knows that she will never be hungry again. Cue Scarlett O'Hara. Now let's go back for a second. Now, I've looked at my viewership in YouTube analytics. I know that most of you are between the ages of 18 to 24. Wow. <laughs> But those of you who are not between the ages of 18 and 24, you probably can remember exactly where you were during 9-11, right? I know that I was in my high school freshman uh, free economics class. I know that the principal came on and made an announcement uh, saying that we had been attacked. The 
dumbass that I am thought he meant the school and I went into panic mode. So again, thinking about 9-11, the difference between that and the Great Depression, 9-11 in the words of William Hurst is 9-11 was an acute, sudden thing, right? So it happened during that day, right, during that morning, and then the event was over. The aftermath, the mythologies, the stories that we built around the event, that was what was long lasting. So we remember that day and we form these mythologies, these stories around the day, but the day was it. It was a concise event, it happened, and then it was over. Whereas the Great Depression was a lasting event, it lasted over several years. So, where does that tie into Fiona Apple? And specifically sourdough bread, that was brought up quite a bit. So when we think about these things, Fiona Apple released Fetch the Bolt Cutters kind of in the middle of a crisis. And because of that, the first time we listened to Fiona Apple's album, which was the first studio album she released in five years, we're now associating that album, that music, with the time we're living in. And so from here on out, past this moment, when we listen to Fetch the Bolt Cutters, in our minds, it could potentially be forever associated with COVID-19. What does that mean for you now? No one is saying don't listen to music. The primacy effect and the recency effect almost work in tandem while being in opposition of each other. And I'm not a clinical psychologist, so don't take that as fact. But from what I'm understanding with my very limited perception, when you take the, recent, the primacy effect, Fiona Apple's album, we listened to it during this pandemic. When you remove that from the pandemic, if you were to continue listening to it, then the recency effect can alter your perception of that. It's like when someone has a fear of spiders, which is mentioned in the article by Richard McNally. When someone has a phobia and they're afraid of spiders, continued exposure to spiders could potentially remove that phobia. Well, if you continue listening to Fiona Apple's album, Fetch the Bolt Cutters, which received a 10 from Pitchfork, their first 10 in 10 years, which is pretty incredible, um, so go listen to it. But when you listen to Fiona Apple's latest, past the pandemic, the recency effect can then override the primacy effect and make it a much more enjoyable listen for you. Wrapping this up, when you look at the primacy effect and the recency effect, and you look at the kinds of things people do to self-soothe when in crises and in pandemics, you have to take into account the effects that we can't see right now. In the article, it mentions that far more people died from the Spanish flu of 1918 than did in World War I and World War II combined. If you look at the data and ask people to list significant events of the past 150 years, most likely they're not going to mention the Spanish flu. A couple things to take from the article and from this, whatever this was. Number one, wash your hands. That's right, the most important thing. Number two, thank an essential worker, right? Thank our healthcare workers, our emergency personnel, thank uh, waste sanitation management people, thank, you know, anybody. Anybody that's having to work through this and putting themselves at risk. Um, oh, cable men. Right? I forgot about that. You wouldn't see this without our uh, infrastructure people, people putting up internet. So big shout out to Chaz, my boy Chaz. Um, but yeah, thank those people as well. Number three, be intentional with your time and how you're spending it. Create new traditions and new rituals, as it says in the article. Shape the narrative, shape the mythology around this time so that you can come out triumphant on the other side. Don't let these ways we have of talking about these memories be the way you want to talk about your memories. Well, I can't do this anymore because it happened during COVID-19, right? Or I don't want to do that anymore because it reminds me of the Rona. Don't do that, right? Be intentional with the memories you're making and how you're making them and with whom you're making them, right? So the time that I'm spending with my wife and child, that's what I'm going to choose to reflect on. That's going to be what I focus my attention on. That's the mythology that I shape around this pandemic. And I want you to do the same. Be intentional with what you're making memories of. Go bake your sourdough bread if that makes you happy, right? But continue to do it after the pandemic because you don't want to associate the delicious, warm sourdough bread with something as terrible and traumatic as COVID-19, right? Be intentional with the memories that you're making, but no one's telling you how to make them and no one's telling you what to make them of. So, yeah. Let's make the most of this. So with that, I'm Justin with the Millennium Mixtape. Thank you for tuning in. I know this was a bit out of the ordinary, but if you want more talky things like this, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to respond with, to you and have conversations. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about this. How are you feeling about Fiona Apple's Fetch the Bolt Cutters? How are you feeling about the pandemic? 
how you're feeling about anything, <laughs> let me know. And uh, until I see you next time, stay safe, stay well.